Okay, guys. Project six for typography, packaging design. We're going to be working on first drafts, printing those. And this demonstration is about printing your first draft. We're going to print the design layer separate from the template layer. Um, this layer, thank you, Miss Emily, for this again. This layer is not, we're not quite finished here, but um, it's just for demonstration purposes only. And this design layer, I, all the bleeds aren't pulled. So uh, all of these graphics, uh, the colors of uh, color boxes need to come out at least an eighth of an inch past the, um, oh, the template lines. So this would uh, look something like this, just so you're aware. Bleeds are important and we do need to pull them. So. I would spend some time making sure that any color shapes or anything going to the edges actually went past the edge at least an eighth of an inch. So you want to take the time to do this in your designs, uh, that is pull your bleeds. So I'm going to, just for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm going to stop pulling bleeds and um, I'm going to move on. Okay, so um, what we need to do here, I'm only going to pull bleeds on just a few things because I also want to show you the importance of bleeds. Uh, during this recording, I will be doing some stuff on the printer that you won't be able to see in the recording. So you'll have to actually physically come up and take a look, maybe take some notes um, and uh, go from there. Okay, we're going to print the package design, the, the design part. We're going to print that to either 110 pound stock, 12 by 18 inches, or 120 pound stock, which is also 12 by 18. However, we're going to be printing the template layer on cheapo paper that Ivy Tech supplies, which would be 11 by 17. So these two paper sizes are two different sizes. So when you put them together, they're not going to match up automatically because they're two different sizes. So one of the things that you guys might want to do, I think it would be pretty smart, is to, uh, you can just go to your template layer. You want to do this on both your layers, actually. And you can draw like a little cross like this. And you want to do that near the four corners of your artwork. This will help you register your uh, work. So when you're looking through the pieces of paper, you can actually get them to uh, align. So you want to do this on both layers, and they need to align. So I've drawn it on the template layer. I'm holding down the shift key and grabbing all of them. I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to turn off that layer, go to my design layer, and I'm going to make sure I'm, my design layer is selected. And I go to Edit, Paste, and Place. They're identically in the same position on both of these layers. Okay? This will help me line this up. So I'm going to save that. So I need to print this first layer to 11 by 17 paper. This is my template layer. So I'm going to go to File and Print. Uh, before I do this, I usually want to check to make sure the printer actually has the um, regular paper in it and not somebody's nice fancy paper. So it does have regular paper. Hopefully it's running just fine. Uh, the setup on this will not be letter. It will be tabloid. And you want to make sure that your page position is centered on this. You don't need marks and bleeds because uh, it's a different kind of animal packaging design is. We are going to then go down to um, the printer button. Make sure two-sided is turned off. We don't know, really need to change our paper stocks yet, so none of this uh, under layout matters right now. So I'm just going to hit print one time there, and I'm also going to hit print on the actual dialog box. Now, if you get a note like this from InDesign, you do not want to hit OK. What does this mean? It says this document contains links to files that are missing or modified or links that uh, are inaccessible. Uh, it says you want to read these. Click cancel and then use the links panel to fix the link problems or click OK to continue. In this case I would hit cancel, I would go to my links panel and I would want to make sure that things are linked up. In this case the actual box template right here is missing digitally. I don't have the file possibly. Let me hit the relink folder and see if I have it. I know when I borrowed this from M I probably just asked her for the um, uh, the InDesign file, and I do not have the product box AI file. This may print pretty crummy. Uh, in this case, this may not be a big deal because it's a template, but uh, it might print a little pixelated. I'm going to go ahead and carry on with this anyway because I don't want to take the time to go find that file and get it from Emily. 
So let me go back through, make sure everything is good. It looks good. I'm going to hit print. I'm going to hit OK on this instead of uh, looking for the link. And I'm going to let it uh, charge me. Uh, oh, if you want to, don't want it to charge you extra money, make sure you tell it black and white. Uh, how do I, and I'm canceling this, how do I make sure I am only getting charged for black and white on this print? Page setup. Page setup. Nope. There's nothing there. You're, you're close. Printer. Printer. It's all right. Where do I go now? Layout. Layout. Xerox features. There we go. It finally showed up. Printer, printer quality or printer output? Oh, paper and output. Thank you. Color options. Black and white. Very good. Thank you. I don't want it to charge me extra money for something I'm going to print black and white. Now, just keep in mind you're going to have to turn that back to color when you go to print your color layout. Just keep that in mind. Otherwise, it'll come out all gray, and you'll be like, whoa, this sucks. I just paid for something, and I don't want it. It's horrible. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go to the print area, and I'm going to change that real quickly. So while it's fresh in my mind, I'm going to take that back to uh, color, because I will forget, and it will be very upsetting to me, because I will have wasted expensive paper that is of limited quanti quantities, and um, I will have had to pay for something. Okay. Now the cool thing is, if I go, if I tell this to print, um, and then I tell it not to accept the charges, I can save the print. Uh, it'll it'll save in its memory. So I hit no, and then I save it. It saves the printing uh, presets there. Okay. So um, so the the printer says there's a paper jam, and there's really not. Uh, so some of the times. When people just put paper back into the tray and they don't push the little paper guides back to where they belong, it will do this. It'll act like it's got a jam, but there's no paper jam. I just noticed that this paper is very loose fitting in there. Whoever put this paper back in there did not put the guides back. So that is why it's giving me that error. And when this happens, sometimes I have to open the door and close it, but this, this time it's doing okay. It's also asked me what kind of paper did I put in here? It's uh, 11 by 17 plain, so I have to tell it size 11 by 17 and the type is plain. And it should print now. With, uh, oh, no, it's saying I still got a jam. This happens pretty often, unfortunately. Actually, there's nothing really jammed. And this should be a no-brainer for this printer. It's not like it's uh, fancy paper. Okay, so I have the template and it is pixelated because I did not have it linked, but I can still function even though this is uh, pixelated. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this um, template layer and I'm going to turn on my design layer. Now again, the reason why this looks so wonky out here is I pulled because I needed bleeds. I didn't pull on the other stuff for bleeds. Now you will go to the printer, you'll take out the uh, lesser expensive 11 by 17 paper and up here I've designated a drawer for your class. It says typography. It's the fourth drawer down. If you open this drawer you will find there's a sticker on each of these stacks of papers. One says 120 pound heavyweight cardstock and the other one says 110 heavyweight cardstock. Most of us will probably be using 120. If your package is, is small uh, I know Paige has some very intricate details. If she tries to score 120 pound uh, paper and get it to fold for her tiny details, it's not going to work very well. So for Paige, she might be using 110. On this, I'm going to be using, uh, this could be 110 as well. It's uh, wrapped around a very rigid steel container. So I could, uh, for M, she could go with 110 pound stock and it would work out just fine. So I'm going to get 110 pound stock. If it's a box that stand up, stands up on its own, and it's uh, bigger than you know two inches by three inches, bigger, it's not a, you know the one we made in class was very small. 
You know, so it could do 110 pound paper, but if it's bigger than this, you'll probably need 120 pound paper. So it's bigger than two by three inches. You'll want 120 pound paper. Now I'm going to put this 120 pound paper into tray one of the printer, but I have to spread the paper indicators so it will fit but always nudge them back so it hugs the paper. If you don't, it'll keep telling you that there's a jam. When I slide this in here, and this is where I need you guys to come up here, I need, to, let's, let's get you four at a time. Uh, four, come, that's okay. Emily, Mustafa, Kyle, there, come on up. There will be a window that pops up when I put the paper in. And it will say, hey, is this 11 by 17 plain paper? This is not. This is 12 by 18. And you're standing there. What do you think you're going to do? Hit size. Hit size. Choose which one. It was 11 by 17. What size did I tell you this was? 12 by 18. 12 by 18, 12 by 18, 12 by 18 guys. And then what do you do now? Is it plain paper? Sorry. It's heavyweight cardstock. Not extra heavy, but heavyweight cardstock. And it's white, right? So just hit OK. Now, okay, you can go have a seat. Now I'm going to uh, pause. Uh, I'll, uh, I don't. I, I'll keep recording. I'll just. I'll just. Um, I'll edit this part out. I need Desena and Kisa, Hannah and Sarah to come up. Don't worry, I'm doing it four at a time. Hold on, I'm going to put this back the way. <laughs> okay. When you pull up 11 by 17 and you put this 12 by 18 heavyweight cardstock sheet in, you're going to get a window that pops up. It says, is this 11 by 17 plain white paper? This is not. What size is it? I just told you this. 12, 12 by 18, sorry. <laughs> okay. Click on size because you have to change that. And change it to 12 by 18. What, what, was it plain paper? No, it was what kind of thing? Heavyweight cardstock. So click on the type and choose heavyweight cardstock. And then just roll to find it. Right. You're so, yeah, when you're on the side, it's, it's tricky. Okay, then if you're ready, you hit okay. So hit okay. And then you go and you print. Okay? All right. Ladies, go ahead and have a seat. All right. Clay, Paige, Brenda, and T, please come on up. 12 by 18. <laughs> He's looking for all the others. Okay. So you're going to pull out the other paper and you're going to put this in. This paper is kind of skinny, this other one. So you're going to spread it out, put this in, close it. And this will come up, and I'll say, hey, what kind of paper is in there? Is that 11 by 17 plain white paper? No. No. So what do you do? Hit size. Yep. Is it plain? Nope. It's heavyweight cardstock. Find heavyweight cardstock. Heavyweight cardstock. It will jam if we could have just done cardstock. This one's uh this one I'm doing right now is 110, and there's the one you guys you'll be using probably 120, but it's either way it's heavyweight cardstock. And then uh, assuming you have that correct, you hit OK. The one that says OK. Okay. I'm gonna try it again here. As soon as you pull it out and push it back in, the little, the little window pops back up again. It'll just ask you, hey, it'll ask you, uh, is this what I have? And it actually is because we just said it. All right. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Paige, I love your hair. It's really awesome. Did you do something different too? Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I'm just holding it down. It's beautiful. All right, so everybody got to see how you need to change this printer so that it will take your 12 by 18 heavyweight cardstock. Again, that's how many inches by how many inches? 12 by 18. And is it plain paper? Yeah. No. It's heavyweight cardstock. Yeah, we need to get our own. I have, where am I, where did I, where do I have your paper? This is yours, guys. 
<laughs> Remembering is hard. <laughs> now, usually I sell this stuff for like uh, 15 cents a sheet because I the bookstore doesn't carry it, so I just sell it at cost. But since I'm making you use this, I'm not making you buy it. Now, if you are like printing 10 of them because you keep messing up, I'm not going to give you more. You're going to have to buy it because uh, this is it, it gets pricey. Okay, so it's in this fourth drawer down. The drawer says BISC 115 typography, okay? Fourth drawer down. All right, now we're back to printing. So I turn off the template layer. Make sure your template layer is off. And again, this is going to be a little rough because we got dotted lines and stuff that shouldn't be here. This is just for demonstration purposes only. We're going to go to File and Print. And we do have to change a number of things in the printer. Setup, instead of tabloid, it will be tabloid oversize. It does not say 12 by 18, folks. It says tabloid oversize. So there's one more thing to remember. Uh, make sure the page position is still centered. Do not click scale to fit, by the way. That will shrink your stuff down or blow it up either way. Just you want 100% of its size. Don't worry about turning on any crop marks or bleeds because we actually manufactured uh, the bleeds and the template provides us uh, where we need to cut. Okay, I'm going to go to the page setup, make sure everything looks good there. I have tabloid oversize. It says here 12 by 18 um, and I'm at the right printer. Now I click on the printer button and I hit OK and here you want to make sure you go to Xerox features and um, in, in the paper area where it says white printer default type, you want to click and go to the other type area and choose heavyweight cardstock. If this is not identical to what you have set at the printer, it will not print. It'll say resources required or it will continuously try to jam when there's really no jam in it. But usually it will say resources required. And when you see resources required, you're like, that's vague. I don't know what that means. But what it means is whatever resource you specified at your uh, computer is different than the resource specified at the printer. So this is heavyweight cardstock. And this cannot print double-sided automatically on heavyweight cardstock. You'll notice that one-sided, two-sided printing automatically went to one-sided printing. If you have something you're printing two-sided, you have to print one side, flip it over, and print the other side. Okay, so uh, typically we'll flip from left to right with the printing face up. We won't flip head to toe uh, on this kind of project. So um, manual double-sided double printing. I'm going to hit print here, and I'm also going to hit print on this one and it is going to print the color version. Uh, I did remember to change the, uh, when I went to the print dialog a second ago, I did remember to change that back to color. Now this is gonna cost more money because it's a color print, but you can hear it printing now. Um, at this point, I'm going to stop the recording because it's all manual from this point with X-Acto knives and stuff like that. So um, let me close this down.